Alrighty. Well, I haven't used this main water line for about a month because I've been filling all these up with rainwater without a problem. I just turned this on before. I'll turn it on again. No water pumps or nothing. And that's rainwater flowing right there. So the old tank that's coming out of us, <laughs> well, we bought it in 1995 and my uncle had it over here for the last oh, 12 to 15 years. And uh, there might be a bit of a tannin build up, but in all honesty, most of that there is, that's just rinse water. So uh, <laughs> it's not going to be exactly as clean as what's coming straight out anyway. But you get a fair bit and you see a bit of a brown tinge to it. Um, I went and used this other line, as I was saying, I hadn't used it for a month, to fill this and yeah, all this blooming algae let go and then uh, block the hell out of everything. I had this one here covered in blooming dust and stuff and, and they've got a failure in these. You've got a spring in there and that's the pressure release and they just lose spring pressure like really quickly within weeks because it's a Chinese heap of shit that costs about $7.50 US. Yeah. <laughs> that's how cheap it is so I've got to put in silicon inside the damn thing and uh, yeah but that one's got all sludge in it although that is probably cleanable it's yeah, gonna take a fair bit of rinsing this one was covered in dust with that failed I had all this crap of wire going through here and and a dirty one of these I've gone and got another one a month or so back that's right there they're starting to use blue instead of green and I got the strap that come with that and whacked it on because the other one was all crawling in cobwebs and crap and I didn't need that uh, so I've resurrected this I've still got to let that that only went on early this morning so I probably should leave it for about three days and I'll probably take the cap off again to help it dry uh, but I'm lining this up this is sort of interesting there's a tiny little bit of copper line that I I really don't know but I think it's actually at a car propane system because most of the cars around here have had that and uh, there's a bit of copper inside the black line and you need hot water that uh, to soften this to shove the copper line up it to then soften this one and shove this over the top so that when you put the hose clamp on it's actually gonna you know not just squash everything to hell so this is what I like to call death from above and I'll get to the story of this character in a minute but this is basically a huge big thing that allowed me to um, I mean you can see those ones uh, there are still green but I killed a lot of other box thorn that got pulled out all around this area by coming over the top with this and this is quite a bloody stick <laughs> and I've just zip tied a lot of crap holder on there uh, I've cut that end off there oh, that's the the dye the blooming um, dye you use for uh, yeah, additive to your pesticide to know what plant you've sprayed so you don't miss things basically. Uh, but the long and short of it is, of uh, when that sets the silicon there, I'll pressurise all this and blow the line out, and uh, yeah, try and clean the line a bit before attaching this little bit here. So I've, I've sort of give this a good clean up. There's a little bit of dust in there still, but that's a lot better. And I put the, there you go, copper pipe in there. Now, in terms of chainsaws, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, this side here, within the first week and a half or, or two weeks, all the choke mechanism failed and you could never get it half choke. And now you can't even turn the ignition off and you've got to flood it by going full choke and riven the shit out of it and flooding it to stop it. That's how full of shit it is. Uh, yeah, still, nice German equipment, bit like Mercedes Benzes. Nice and high tech, all great when they're working, and when they fuck up, oh god, you don't know where to start. So, yeah, my father's already ripped it apart and had a look, and no, oh, I couldn't see anything wrong here. Well, it's never been that good. Anyway, a lot of these chains are getting fairly bloody thin on it. There's a few more sharpens in some of them. There's supposed to be five chains, I think I lost one. I've <laughs> got that many chains, that many cheap shit burnt out chainsaws that I've had over the years it's just you lose track of what's what you know but anyway onto this one out here I bought this back in 2010 uh, using my uh, little business uh, visa card <laughs> and um, 
yeah, long and short of it, I was buying some other very cheap electric chainsaws that turned out to be factory returns, but I bought several of the same thing, so, you know, I got a bit of use out of them before the engines finally died. GMC, some of you will know what that brand was. It's a former brand that was Chinese built, but it's Australian owned and designed. And they made some bloody good shit before they went down with a combination of um, <laughs> a major hardware chain chopping out a lot of shelf space and, and limiting the number of products they had to like two thirds, plus signing an exclusive deal with a different tool manufacturer, Ryobi, to be the sole stocker of Ryobi products, and it killed GMC, and they were fucking brilliant products in terms of cheap stuff. And I have a planer still. Now, you get the nastiest, shittiest planer, it'll cost you $40. And this here, whatever the hell it is, is a GMC. 22 bucks, and it is far, far ahead of the quality of the $40 one. <laughs> you know, Chinese stuff, but it was the higher end of all the Chinese made stuff. Uh, with an Australian company, but while I was getting those, I saw this here for 140 bucks. Read about 95 US dollars on clearance, and uh, it's a copy of a still which doesn't really balance correctly because that should be sitting back and lifting that up. But she is a 52cc 22 inch bar. <laughs> I'm not joking. Now, I try to pull start it fairly aggressively the first few times, and I blew this to bits and uh, lost the ability of it to wind back. And a bit of a complicated spring system, there's actually two springs in there. So I cut all the, it was just veins like that, out of the top there. So I could try and wind it back with the screwdriver before I pull started. My father has been playing around a bit. Uh, he got it running in front of me, but the all this stuff here got caught in there because he didn't realize that there's two springs involved in it and one of them wasn't retracting properly and then it ended up yeah melting <laughs> the rope to all inside here now he's got new rope he's got it all sorted out and i heard this running this morning and you know this sat in a cupboard for nine years <laughs> just because i broke the pull starter it sat for nine years and now it runs and it is basically brand new and it is fairly noisy in terms of chainsaws this here although we've got a bit of dust there i'll blow out that's like the stills for when you use them in sub-zero temperatures they have a condensation build up problem that's the cap for that because this is built to it's just a copy of a still so it's you know you can use this in blooming solid snow and everything apparently of course, uh, they run a little bit rich uh, because, you know, it's a shitty, shitty engine. So they just decide, well, if you put more two-stroke oil in it, it'd be fine. Uh, these chains, are, I thought this was an Oregon chain. It's probably not, but you can swap it with an Oregon chain. I'm going to have to dig through my manuals to find out what Oregon chain you can swap it with. And I might buy a few extra chains. She's not exactly a, a tool-free changeover. And uh, she's basic enough. And uh, has obviously been sitting next to a box inside the cupboard. But long and short of it is, yeah, she's uh, she's brand new, and this stops me having to go out and spend bloody eight hundred plus dollars or over a thousand dollars to get a good one of a similar size. I was going to get uh, Husvana because I think I have had my run with friggin' stills, to be honest. <laughs> There's some good brands I buy, and they don't really turn out as good as you had hoped. And uh, yeah, I abused the shit out of the steel, but bloody hell. Who has all the fucking mechanism for the choke and everything? Break within the first two weeks, man. Give me a fucking break. Like, that shit shouldn't happen with a top-of-the-line chainsaw. It just shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. You know, and sometimes I get brands that are supposed to be good, like Dometic Fridges, and they turn out to be fucking shit. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, I uh, only really need to cut... Enough for next year. In terms of big logs, I've never got any shortage of small logs, but I do need stuff that's bigger stuff. So I shall go and uh, use this tomorrow and chop everything up. You got your uh, your locking pin there for your uh, accelerator. That's your ignition. And that's your choke. And uh, yeah, so I've got to just uh, change a little bit on the flop here. Might just do a little bit of tension on that chain. I've got to put. 
oil in and shit and and uh, yeah but uh, that, that at least saves me for another year anyway in terms of getting a job I'm probably not going back to the old place and I might be looking for a whole new one which uh, oh I hope I get some work out of the Christmas rush because I may or I may not <laughs> and I don't know what the future holds after that because we're you know slowed up to like a 1.4 percent growth rate here where yeah, the economy's really starting to cool off a little bit too much for my liking, but anyway.